Hello and welcome to the Busy Bays Podcast, where we provide valuable insight and advice on the marketing and other business type questions that auto repair shops encounter as they work towards achieving their goals. Now here's our hosts, Martin Morgan and Becca Weinveen. Welcome to the Busy Bays Podcast, a podcast that's all about being the ultimate marketing and business resource for auto repair shop owners. In this episode, we take the time to dive into our auto repair shop customer survey and tell you about our findings. If you've read any of our emails or check out our resource center on our website, we have been talking about this automotive industry survey. And at this point, if you know what I'm talking about, great. And if you don't, that's why we're here. Martin, what is this whole survey that we're so excited about sharing? Becca, this is a recent survey that, that we did with repair shop customers. So we surveyed repair shop customers across the United States. We had nearly 600 people participate. We wanted to get a good diverse group of independent auto repair shop customers, dealership customers, and franchise customers. Ask them some really good questions about why they choose the shops they choose and what's most important to them and came out with some really good data that we're excited to share and talk about. We really want to help them focus on their marketing messages or activities that they can focus on as a business owner. Absolutely. Perhaps find those opportunities that exist to either communicate what's best about their shop in a way that's going to pull the customers in or potential customers in or just good knowledge that they can utilize on a day-to-day basis when it comes to dealing with customers. We ask customers to rate their repair shop across the categories of price, quality of service, trustworthiness, speed of service, and finally, convenience. Overall, what stands out from all those groups of data? Well, Becca, I think one of the the biggest things that stands out is that independent repair shop customers are just happier overall than the customers of dealerships and franchises. In fact, we had those five specific areas that you talked about, and independent repair shop customers beat out the other two in all five measures. And it was especially uh, noticeable that they beat them out strongly on the subjects of price, and speed of service, and then also convenience. A lot of good information, a lot of happiness among the customers of independent repair shops that you don't see really when you look at the numbers for dealerships and franchises. Another area where independent shops actually beat out the others was in trustworthiness. So Martin, how can shops actually display trustworthiness towards their customers? Trustworthiness was a, a strong suit for the independents, and uh, in fact, they, 89% of the, their customers said they would rate their shop as excellent, whereas it was just 82% for dealerships and then 76% for franchises. And I think trust is the key word there when it comes to trustworthiness. It's building that trust with your customers. Uh, oftentimes, you've got to earn people's trust almost all the time you have to earn their trust. And the way you do that is by telling them exactly what you're going to do and then making sure you do what you say you're going to do and live up to those promises that you make. And and also just approach things in a really understanding way and know that oftentimes your customers, they may not know the details about what you're talking about And the more that you can explain in a way that they are going to be able to understand, the much better they're going to appreciate that, as opposed to uh, potentially talking in real technical terms that are not going to be approachable for the typical repair shop customer. Yeah, I probably wouldn't even want to go to a shop that's like, I got to take this part out of this side of the car because I don't know anything what they're saying. It's exactly right. And, and part of what happens, and I, and I think it's not, it's not malicious, it, it's just right, right. when you're inside the shop a lot of times and you're used to talking at a level that all the experts that are in the shop with you know, <laughs> it's, it's hard for you to, to, to bring that down a couple levels to the lay person so they understand what you're saying. But also in this survey, I noticed that we were talking a little bit about convenience and what that means for the customers within the shops. But when a customer actually takes their car into the shop, 
what are they looking to find in the terms of convenience? Convenience is the area that probably surprised us a little bit more because people, at least at, as we see it, may not typically think of the independent repair shops as convenient because usually for very good reasons from a recruiting and hiring and, and uh, employee happiness standpoint are usually just open you know, maybe eight to five or so, sometimes earlier, sometimes later, Monday through Friday, not on the weekends, which isn't typically as convenient for uh, as high of a percentage of the population. However, they, they did win on convenience versus the dealerships and franchises. And part of that is chalked up to location. They're in their local area. They're near where people live. They, they like that aspect of it. It could also be because they have built in kind of like creature comforts into their service where they also may have like a, a local drop off service or maybe some sort of agreement with with Uber to get their customers dropped off. It's great to hear the customers of the independent repair shops talking about convenience in this way, because oftentimes that seems to be something that can be a challenge for the independents. So definitely kudos to you, independent shop owners, because that's awesome that people recognize that. So Martin, of what we found, what keeps customers actually coming back to the shops? This was a big finding, I think, in in our survey here, because uh, across all customers now, we're talking the independents, the dealerships, the franchises, of all people who took the survey, uh, we did ask them how would they rate their shop on these five things, which are basically the same five things, price, quality of service, trustworthy tax, speed of service, and convenience. And these were loyal shop customers. And basically what they told us is the two most important things to them were quality of service and trustworthy tax. So 49% rated their shop as excellent on quality of service, 47% rated it as excellent on trustworthy techs. Those really are the keys. Oftentimes, we can get caught up in thinking, oh, well, it's always price, price, price. That's what people care the most about. It turns out that's not really ultimately true. Now, that's not to say there's not a group of people who mostly all they care about is price. But across most customers, the two most important things our quality of service, and trustworthy techs. And being able to have a small business like independent repair shops, I mean, they can win with service because it is so personal and it can be so sincere. And that's absolutely true. That's making that individual connection. That's being connected to the community that you're in. That's, That's noticing your customers when you're out and saying hi. But of course, it's also delivering that good quality service, having those frank discussions and and good customer service type discussions with with the customers. So on the lines of customer service, being able to be recognized for having that sincere and personal relationship with customers, how can a business do that? I think a great way to do that is establish relationships with your customers that go just beyond their vehicle. Uh, Ask about their life, uh, try to understand what's happening for them, Try to be connected to uh, what's going on if they have children, if they're involved in other community uh, events or organizations or associations, maybe where they work. All of those things that that make it much more of a relationship that's not based on a transaction. And so it's not just about they bring their car, you do the work, you you charge them, they pay the money and then they're gone. But a great way to really make it much more personal and then sincere is to, is to do that sort of relationship building that can lead to long-term customers. And also don't be afraid to do something additional like writing uh, handwritten notes or thank you cards after the fact as well. And it'll probably make your job a heck of a lot more fun too and just enjoyable to talk to the people that you see every day. Definitely true. So how could a customer be able to tell the difference between an upsell versus a recommendation that a shop makes? I think one of the key things there is, again, building up that trust. And this is true in in many businesses. If the first thing a customer hears from you is just an ask for 
money or what they're going to perceive as an ask for more money, then they're probably going to take that not very well. Especially if they're in a situation where they feel exposed or like they're, they're overly concerned about what the situation may be. That's part of the reason why it's so important to work to establish that relationship uh, up front. You know, when somebody, if it's maybe somebody's coming in for the first time and you ask them about their day, what their day looks like, if they want uh, something like coffee or water or any of those things, in a way that where you're setting their, their mind at ease. It goes back a lot to one of those um, sayings, and one of the things that, that often gets attributed to Maya Angelou is people are going to always remember the way that you make them feel. So if you make somebody feel warm and supported and that they can trust you, that's going to be significant to that. I think one of the other things is being straightforward with them as well. We talked about talking to them in a way that's going to help them understand. But also, as you're evaluating, whether it's a, a big issue where they brought the car in for a repair and it's a big one, or it's just maybe a routine tune-up or something like that, if you approach it from the standpoint of, here's what we did, here's what we found, here's what our recommendations are, and you say something along the lines of, these are critical, we highly recommend that you get this taken care of today, here are some other things that we could potentially do in the future. That always helps build some of that trust that's going to make a big difference. And also letting people know why things are important as opposed to just saying, hey, th this isn't working well for you or we're afraid this is going to stop working. As opposed to just saying that, saying something like, hey, this is not in great shape. And if this stops working, you're going to be broken down on the side of the highway. Yeah. You know, you, you've got to help people understand what, what's at stake. But again, you want to present that in a, a very respectful way and, and not make them seem like they feel like they're dumb for not knowing those things. Yeah, absolutely. Clearly, being perceived as having trustworthy technicians is really important. I mean, how, how are shops able to convey that they have those trustworthy techs? I think the sooner that you can make a connection between the techs and the customer, the better. Trustworthiness is critically important, and trustworthy techs was the second most important factor as far as how people decide if they're going to bring their car back to a shop or not. The sooner you can get them out in front of it and, and get them in front of a customer to say, hey, here's what we did. I'm the one who worked on your car personally. Here's what I looked at. Here's what I found. You know, here's something we did maybe a little bit extra that you didn't ask us to do that we're not going to charge you for. Or we noticed that you needed some, some more windshield wiper fluid. So we went ahead and topped that off for you. Any way that you can start creating some goodwill or help the customer feel like the tech is going over and above really to serve them well or something around here we will sometimes refer to as the emotional piggy bank, right? So you want to start depositing coins in that, the emotional piggy bank of the customer or let your tech do that and have a really good conversation. Always ask them if they have any questions. Ask them if there's something that didn't get covered. But that's really important. I know some of you may be listening and saying, hey, that sounds great, but guess what? There's a couple of my techs that they just don't really have the skills right now to get in front of the customer and perform well in those instances. And what I would tell you is that investing and in helping them get those skills is going to be worth every penny that you would pay and more. So I would highly encourage you to go ahead and, and invest it in those techs and in their skills when it comes to customer service and talking with the customer. And honestly, one of the most important things is shop owners. They need to trust their technicians. That is definitely true. And, and, and that'll come through. If, if you don't trust somebody in your shop, then the customer is going to be able to see that pretty quickly. And a question that comes to my mind is, is, is it more important for shop owners to bring back their old customers or should they always be recruiting new ones? It is a good idea to always be recruiting new ones. You should be thinking about bringing in new customers at, at, at all times, um, but it, it's critically important to keep the customers you have. I don't know what the most recent number is, but I, I remember 
at times it's been said that it takes 10 times as much money to recruit a new customer as it does to bring current customer back in. And that's not just for auto repair, but that's really kind of a, a, a business world thing. So I don't know what the exact number is in, in auto repair, but really focusing on, on keeping those customers you have. And from that standpoint, you've already paid a bunch of the money to try to get them in the shop at the, at the beginning. And every time either you interact with that customer or somebody from your shop interacts with that customer, it's an opportunity to either gain more of their business or to lose it all. So keep that in mind from a relational standpoint. It really pays to, to spend the time to make sure to nurture those relationships with your current customers. We often have that experience, right, where we, we get a service and, and we pay a low fee to get into the service because we're a new customer and we feel good about that. And then as soon as that the, the contract timing or whatever it is goes away, and, and then we're paying two to three times more than any of the new customers. And when, then we think, well, that really stinks. What the heck? <laughs> right? So um, that, that just ends up in resulting in, in unhappy customers. You think of things like mobile phones, you know, cell phone service, uh, cable, any of those types of things. And, and that makes you feel. And guess what? Those industries have like the worst customer satisfaction rates. In, in, all of, in all of business. So you wanna make sure that, that you're not that person that treats your new customers like gold and treats your longtime customers like dirt. Yeah, because I think building the relationships with your customers will become so apparent to the new ones that come in the door, they see how you interact with the old ones. And I think that will show a great deal of who you are. So another helpful piece from this survey that we found out was that customers really hate bad reviews. Why do people value reviews online and they can make a decision solely based on the reviews they read, whether they know the people who left them? That is exactly right. So, so reviews, and, and we spent a lot of time last month talking about reviews. And if you haven't listened to that podcast, I would highly encourage you to, because we really did a nice deep dive on reviews. And, and certainly we believe that reviews are, are critical and, and they are critical to most consumers. I think one of the other recent numbers that we saw is nine out of 10 consumers will read reviews on a company or business that they, would, they plan to do business with so it's really important and in our survey here uh, we asked what what would make you significantly less likely to visit a shop and 27 percent of the people that took the survey said bad reviews and and again we talked about this some last month but re reviews are really like the social proof of of the modern day and and that's really the concept that people want to feel like they're making the decision that is best for them and when they're unsure about things, they use the wisdom of the crowd to make those decisions. It's the same reason that we'll ask a bunch of our friends when we're thinking about maybe buying a car or buying a house or, or just picking out you know, clothes. We wanna feel good about our decisions and many of the ways that we can try to make ourselves feel good is to make sure or to check to see if other people are making that same decision. So when we see those good reviews, it helps us feel like, yep, this is gonna be a good decision. I see all these other people that are happy. When we see those bad reviews, we say, ooh, this looks really bad. This is a bad decision. I am not gonna pick that shop. So um, reviews are definitely really important. Of course, we like the good times when the reviews are good, people are coming in, but I mean, what about the customers who are a little bit less likely to come to the shop? What, what would make them not come back? A couple of other things that we found in this survey, and really the number one reason that people picked, and this does tie into bad reviews, uh, was bad reputation. So 30% of, of people said bad reputation. Bad reviews really are like your online reputation, so you could almost pool those two together, but certainly reputation gets around many other places uh, beyond online. Um, just as any, anybody in, in business knows, you, you can go years making people happy and, and not have anything go around town. And, and the one time that, that you, you know, slip up a little bit, uh, all of a sudden everybody hears about that. So bad reputation was really important. The other thing, the third one was bad phone service, which was 17%. So 
you know, somebody calls, they've got some questions, they don't feel like they got dealt with properly, then they're going to be really unhappy. You know, a lot of times that first call is a test to see how comfortable they're going to be or how good they're going to feel about going to your shop. And, and if you don't perform well in that first test on the phone, then they can quickly call somewhere else and that's what they'll do. And trying to keep up with not having a bad reputation. I mean, we touched a little bit on in the survey how likely customers are willing to leave reviews for the shop. What were the responses of that? It is really interesting because we did ask them how likely they would be to leave a review. And, and we asked them in, in two different groupings. So we asked those who, who were asked to leave a review how likely they would be to leave two post a review for the shop. And, and those who were asked to leave a review, 62% of them said that they did review the shop online. So that's a, that's that's a pretty great. good number. It is, it yeah. is great. It contrasts that to, we asked those who were not asked to leave a review, how likely they were, or if they did leave a review. In that instance, 18% said that they left the review. So. The key takeaway here is if you want reviews, ask your happy customers to leave reviews. That is critical. People are going to be more likely to do so if you ask them. And if you don't, then there's a good chance that they're not. Because as soon as they step away, they're going to be distracted by 500 other things and they'll, they'll never think about it again. But if you do ask them, it, it will stick with them and they're going to be at least three times more likely to leave. So this survey that we've done with over 600 customers of repair shops, this is not just fun facts that we mustered up to make an afternoon a little less boring, but we actually surveyed these real customers and uncovered voices of many people that directly influence your business. So we were able to touch on bits and pieces of the survey, but if you want to see more specifics, please visit our website at www myrsw.com and click resources at the top of the page and there will be infographics available as well as a great webinar hosted by our market research analyst Jeremy who explains the survey in detail with graphs to help you follow along in his webinar. Thank you for listening to the Busy Bays podcast. If you want more information about this please visit myrsw.com and go to our resource center. We plan on hosting one of these every month, so subscribe to our podcast so you don't miss out. We just have one more favor to ask of you. It would mean the world to us if you would share this with your friends and colleagues. Our goal is to help auto repair shops succeed, so you can help us achieve this goal by just telling someone else about this show. Thanks again. Have a great day.